with Spencer Pierce Little Farm lies on 230 agricultural acres in the colonial town of Newbury, Massachusetts. The estate was first established in 1635. Today, a battle scenario will play out between the American colonists and the British regulars. The date is 1776. And did you make all of these? Everything you see, I made. Wow. Everything. No machinery there, right? Eh? No. No, sir. No machinery. No machinery. Very, Very clever young, young man. Face. <laughs> <laughs> when the colonial militia set up camp, the locals would make a small village to provide them provisions. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it was lawful to coin money. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the carpenter? I am the ship's carpenter today, yes sir. Very good. Showing people all my favorite tools and how those tools would take a tree and turn it into a ship or a house or whatever it is they need building. But wasn't the ship's carpenter also the surgeon on board? He may have been. It depends on how big the crew was. If they could afford to have a separate surgeon. If it was a big warship, for example, they would have at least one dedicated man who was a But other than that, if they had to have a leg amputated... They could come to me and they could borrow my saw if they wanted to, <laughs> okay. absolutely. But I was usually trying to piece the ship back together again so it would sail away and get these sailors home or not and not sink. Very good. So. And here are your tools. Yes, sir. I have uh, where do you plug them in? Everything. Um, well, all my power tools are already plugged in right here. So my Where? my power tools are right here. So I just provide all the power I need to in my individual hand tools. Thank you, so sir. So they don't have any uh, any other kind of uh, connection, unfortunately. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. The battle for Newbury never really happened, but it could have. It is the summer of 1776. In March of that year, General William Howe was forced to evacuate his British regulars from the besieged city of Boston, transferring these forces by sea to Nova Scotia. Desiring to retake the lost city, a plan is enacted to land British forces on the north shore of Massachusetts near the town of Newbury, and then push south to Boston. The Americans, having discovered the plan through their spy network, mass their forces at the Pierce Farm, just outside of the town, to oppose the British regulars in their march south to lay siege to Boston. Everyone is a lot looser. Like when we switched to the, when I took over the 35th and we switched to the lights, I moved. I really enjoy it. Where's the Oh, that's nice. So this flag actually uh, flew in 1776 and went with our unit down from, we were at the siege of Boston. We went with Washington all through New York, through New Jersey, crossing uh, the Delaware into Trenton, Princeton, and Assapig Creek. Cool. And then our unit disbanded right after that. And there's a lot of symbolism here. If you notice the up in the cant and the stripes, that's uh, reminiscent of the Sons of Liberty's flag. Yeah. So it was to go with that. You'll also notice we've got a pine tree. The pine tree is indicative of New England, and it also says, uh, thumbs the nose of the king, because all the straight, tall pine trees were supposed to be the kings. Um, we have a cornfield, which is also representative of New England, and with the soldier bleeding here, and the officer pointing to the children, supports our motto, for posterity we bleed. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you.
God save the king! This is the British campsite. A bit more organized and formal than the colonists. Let's take a trip through it. Yeah, yeah okay. well, that's more just like, okay, so our, our, our regiment is laying us for whoever's comfortable. Okay. I just think it's like short or long. It's a short, right? They claim this. This is probably true. I have the biggest. <laughs> Make it look good. Okay, we're we're on camera and probably no. probably sound Sorry. recorded as well. Mikey's got the biggest mug. Yeah, that was that was. <laughs> wait, wait. It couldn't even last that long. Tavern <laughs> after tavern. So now that we're not, now it's that like we're not, it's like an older angry, form of checkers. Is that what it is? It is checkers. It is checkers. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking about maybe mine. I'm set up. What are you doing? It's going to beat you in three moves. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to, I went to Brentfield. It's easy to buy. Ooh, how was it? It's good. And what's your job here? Raiders Rangers. We're uh, we're here to scout out the um, the colonials and see what they're up to, and perhaps engage them before the main body of the British forces. So they bring, they bring the Scotsmen in to soften them up, right? No, no, no. We're not all Scots. No, no. Okay. And where yeah, are we're, you? We're where actually are you? Uh, King's Rangers are formed up from loyalists who are still loyal to the King of England, uh, unlike these. Uh, Colonials here who decide that the rebellion is the best bet. What are we cooking today? It's a corn and clam chowder. Ooh. So it's a little bit of everything put together. The French call that a melange. Try to get a little bit of everything for the guys that way it's cheaper and tastes good. Yeah. All at once. You didn't uh, check the clams too, did you? That's, that's what the uh, young soldiers are for. <laughs> you bring them out and actually, if, when I did put it together, I just steamed the clams. Yep. And you take, the, that way you get your broth. Right. And then you just pull, pull them in there, drop them in, throw the, toss the shells in the fire. Very good. So you steam them up, you get your broth at the same time when it releases the meat. We have mussels, clams, and shrimp in here. Along with uh, two pounds of corn. Done. Throw it on the ground, Sarah. I'll get it. Is that all? What is a gorge? No, it's a, no, that's no, that's what just is a gorge. A gorge? Well, the, the, uh, it is French. Is An original gorge is actually from the time of knights, and it was actually the piece of metal that actually protected the knight's neck from getting stabbed. Now, if you see um, somebody has got. It. Oh, it's, it, it's the sil it's the silver or gold plate that hangs down. It signifies that that is an officer who is on duty. Tell me what you're doing. I am making Swedish apple pie. Ooh. We have the apple pies over there, getting ready to go into the Dutch ovens in a little while, just as soon as my coals are all heated up. When they're heated and hot. I'll put some underneath my Dutch ovens. I'll put my pies in there, I'll put the pie in before I put it in there, and then I'll put some coals on top. I'll cook it for probably 20 minutes, check it. Things tend to cook a little bit faster in a very small space. What is a Dutch oven? No, I, this is a Dutch oven. I'm not trying to actually kill any of these guys. There are, I actually have some friends over who are so over on their side. Like it oven. It was the oven of their time. Um, <laughs> cast iron. You can get up just like you would your regular you oven. You I mean, put a trivet in there because the, because the bottom so is going to be very hot when I put the coals uh, underneath it. And the trivet keeps the, um, the pie plate off of the surface. Then I put my lid on after I put my pie in there. And I put my coals on, and the coals are good for about 10 to 15 minutes of cooking time. Depending on how big the coals are is going to depend on how much it's going to cook my product that's in my oven. So there's a lot of checking involved. Well, it's very time consuming, isn't it? That's why we're starting it now, because we're having it for dinner. Okay, okay. good thinking. Thank you. You're welcome.
subsequent tonight to indicate I represent the king and this proves it because not only do I have this but I also have card. I right I write because you know knights in their helmets had visors which means from a distance you couldn't tell who they were so how could you tell if the, the helmet was up? What they would do was they would paint their, their, uh, what did they call that? Their, coat of their, arms? Their, their, coat of arms! Who was that? Thank yes, you. thank you, <laughs> coat of arms. By, right. by the way, sir. I'm sorry? You, you're wearing a gorget. Yes. Yes. Oh. He, yes, right. Where were you when I needed you five minutes ago? It comes gorget. from the French word, what? That's right, the French word. What is the French word? The, for the throat, the gorge. Gorge, la gorge. Right. Yes, right. And right. so the gorge was what protected the gorge. Very but good. they would paint their coat of arms on this, so even though the visor's down, you still know who it is. Boys, y'all. Two. Lift it straight up, but, up, but don't, bring it in, don't bring it in front yet. You're still off the side. That's it. Nice. Three. Oh, what are we today? We're the Pfeiffer and a drummer. The what? We're Pfeiffer and a drummer in the... Oh, you're drummers? Well, she's a drummer, I'm a Pfeiffer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's your job? So, basically, what the Pfeiffer and the drummers do is um, we send out commands, such as, you know, cease fire, retreat, two arms, um, because the Pfeiffer and drum are really loud, so you can hear it from across the battlefield, you know, not just someone shouting. And we also like provide march music so everyone's stepping in time. And that's what this means. And there are some unknown so things you're going to have. Yes. Yeah. 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 But. How was your adventure? Really? Infection. We know how to treat infection. We don't have antibiotics, no. But we know how to wash and clean. But we don't know what causes the infection. And if you go over to that colonial doctor on the other side of the field there, he'll probably tell you that infection, pussiness, oh, that's a sign of healing. And a lot of people did believe that. Yes, if you didn't puss, they might actually introduce something to try to get it because they thought pussing was part of the healing process. The American contingent was made up of the local militia, a ragtag group of farmers, shopkeepers, and other patriotic members of the town. Also, some professional uniformed soldiers from the Continental Army. The British, of course, consisted of the Army regulars, a well-trained and disciplined fighting force, probably Europe's best army of that time. colonists have taken a stand on high ground, a tactic that dates back to the earliest times. The British regulars must fight uphill, much like they did at the Battle of Bunker Hill. You'll notice, however, that the British keep advancing upward, while the colonists are consistently moving backwards. This is not a good sign for the American patriots.